Welcome back to Cool Club's headquarters here in Scottsdale. Uh, we're here today with, uh, I want to call him a good friend of mine. His name is Brad Kennedy. He is a tour pro, one of the greatest putters I've ever seen. Um, Japan tour winner, Australian tour winner. Uh, he's just a winner. And he's got a product today that uh, I think is going to change a lot of people's understanding of, of how to hold putts and become a better putter. Uh, Project One Putt. Tell us all about it, and how we use it, who should use it, and, and what the changes you're going to see. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Thanks for having me. It's great to come back to Phoenix. I haven't been in Phoenix for probably 20 years when I came back to qualifying school, uh, all those many years ago. But it's putting's been my life. It, it's always been there for me in, in um, my success. And growing up, that, that's all I did, just chipping and putting. And I think for me to be able to spend 25 years on tour, putting has been a massive part of that. And at the end of the day, it, it's the last stroke that we make. And a lot of people don't realise that it, it can be up to at least 40, 50% of our actual strokes gained on on we, what the way we play. And yet putting is the least practised and often the, the one that gets left left by the, the most, but it's always the most complained about. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> uh, probably five or six years ago now, I was uh, just in a rain delay in Japan and we are having a chat with a couple of mates and... At that stage, I was considering retirement, and one of my friends said, well, you're such a great part of why the knowledge you have could be so valuable to, to other people. Why don't you create something that can be an asset to, to people? And I've always loved the challenge of, of helping people and trying to understand what, what really is beneficial to, to a lot of players. And went away, did a few prototypes, and he he made some up and, and that was where it all started. And now it's become a real passion to not only help the best in the world, but also help help juniors and anyone that wants to get better off. I, I look back at myself as a 13-year-old a, a starting and just the information now that's available is, is priceless. And if I had have had a lot more of that when I was younger, my career may have, may have been different, but I think the... The value that I've been able to to produce with Project One Putt is to really try and enhance people's learning into how to become a better putter. And so through the through the inserts that you it gives you a real visual of of what a what a putt should look like, especially when you're trying to read greens. I think that's a real hard thing for for people to understand how to actually read a green properly. And it's not you know I I work with people on putter fitting a lot. And I know, we know in the industry, if you can get someone holding more putts, they're going to go out day one and they're going to change the, the score on the card rather than hit the driver 10 yards further. It doesn't guarantee it, but holding the putt guarantees the score to get better. So it's so, so important to enjoyment and, and betterment in the game. And in a session of putter fitting, you know, we've got one of the best putter fitting studios here in the world, I think, in terms of being able to move it and break it and putt view and track man. It's, it's awesome. But still, you spend an hour, maybe two hours with a guy or a girl, and you, you, you can't train someone in that short space of time to hold breaking putts, understand speed, see where the ball's got to go in. You know, it takes time to develop. It, it, it's, it's, you know, you're not born with it. It, it takes time to really ingrain it. Yep. What I love about what I see here, and, and I really haven't spent that much time with it, so I love being able to talk about this with you, is the visual, like you say. Like, we are visual learners most of us really want to see and feel what we're, what we're doing and putting is such a feel and see thing because of the undulation topog topography on the green this to me looks like it's it's really going to stand out and be like a wow moment oh that's where the ball's got to go in yeah and you know elaborate on that for us about you know how the placement of these is it is it to do with entry point yeah well entry point is is probably one of the biggest key factors for being a great putter because really in a in a round of golf you you have a straight putt so you've always got to find where the entry point is for that particular putt to maximize the width of the hole a lot of times where people they might read the putt but their their last instinct is center of the hole so that's where the ball goes and they'll miss low side so low side for me was a real part of designing the the whole training aid was to i need to train someone's eyes to look at the higher point a lot more so that the, they can actually see where the high point of the, or the apex point of the putt is, and then the entry point. 
which is generally left or right of the hole, depending on, or the center of the hole, depending on the putt. So by putting level one in the hole, for instance, which is 33% of the size of the hole, by putting that on the low side of the hole, instantly the center of the hole's disappeared. And it's trained your eyes to look at a higher point towards the hole, which then through the training, you can then really train your eyes to see those lines a lot clearer. And also with putting, it's you don't realize how much pressure is involved. So when you're out there putting, a lot of people have anxiety, fear about putting because they they just don't understand it or they they just miss putts. So with the with the training aid and and the skills and the drills that I've created, it gives you that feeling of pressure, but at the same time you're practicing at a high level. And through all my development through performance based practice, if you can train and practice in a higher environment. Once you get back to the reality of playing golf, all those fears go away and you're able to just play naturally through your processes and start to enjoy the game and, and making more putts. There's no better, no better feeling. What I love about this is um, uh, when I grew up, putting was the last thing on the list. And I don't know whether that's uh, a human thing in terms of like, oh, I just want to hit balls or, you know, you, you watch swings on TV. You do watch a lot of parts, but you don't really pay attention to it as, as a kid. I think you just like seeing people bash it. And I think coaching went down a road um, of really, really technical information, which is great. You know, it develops a swing, but like this gets it done. The putting gets it done. And and I'm, I just love that you're paying attention to it. You are genuinely one of the best parts I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of people hit parts in my life. And it's, it's great to kind of just get, eke this out of you and see what you're seeing. Because I think... This really does that. Like it's this is what Brad's picturing in his head, and for one of the best parts in the world to be be showing us what he's seeing is pretty pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it doesn't matter what sort of putter you are either, whether you're a lineal putter who sees straight lines, or whether you're a non-lineal putter that looks at the exact line of the path that the, the ball is going to track. It works the same because the entry point doesn't is the same regardless yep. of how you read it. And uh, yeah, guys like John Rahm, Tom Fleetwood. Francesco Molinari, uh, Thomas Peters, they're all, they're all using the product and it's just part of all their other drills and programs that they, they do, but it's, it's one that tests, tests your ability to hit the perfect putt because it just adds that other element that a lot of things don't, don't do. And the pressure component of finishing off the drill, there's a score component that's attached to, to each, each level and you're not allowed to go to the next level un until you've achieved it. So there's a, there's a personal, I guess, uh, determination to actually get to each, each level and, and that creates, that learning is, uh, is contagious. Yeah, well, this discipline is, is not in golf, if not any other sport, but you know, it's so important. Uh, and I, I definitely struggled. You know, A, I don't think I, I paid enough attention to putting in, in my, you know, start of the game. And, and B, I, I didn't, definitely didn't find many drills or um, practice methods that allowed me to put myself under pressure. So when I got on the golf course, I freaked out, you know, and I've I changed my putting stroke to try and fix the problem. And, and I know that it's not necessarily that. This, this, this isn't teaching you how to stroke a part. This is teaching you how to hold a part. And that is all that matters. Yep. And especially with, with using using sort of training aids like this, it practicing under pressure, you get to understand how your stroke works under pressure, which then you can take out on the golf course. If you're, if you're working just on, on speed or line, then that's, that's great. But then you've got to go and take the, that practice work and put it in a pressure environment to then be able to take it on the golf course. There's no point walking from the putting green straight onto the golf course and expecting to hold a six foot putt if you haven't understood what the pressure feels like. And for me, the last 12 years of gaining the performance-based knowledge, that's what I'm all about now. I'm, tr I'm training new things, and, and, but then I've got to test them before I can actually take it out on the golf course and expect to be able to do, do certain skills. And it's, um, it definitely helps to understand your own game and what sort of pressure you can handle. And I guess that's the difference between anybody's abilities how much how much pressure can you understand and still still hit your best shot and for me that's what i'm always trying to experiment on uh, which really 
is a great thing to feel when you can actually hit a shot under pressure and, and it comes off. That's it's the I call it the wow moments. Yeah. And I've tried to build that into into putting and there's no better thing when you see something on Instagram and a 10 year old using it and he's giving it a fist pump and because he just made a, a <laughs> nine foot putt with level three it's uh i feel back feel like i'm giving something back to the game that i've that i've loved for so long that's awesome show show uh, show us the product you know you can obviously go on project one putt.com and you know cipher through it read some information and see it but you know pop it up here and just explain a little bit about about the shapes yeah so there's four Four, uh, four levels plus there's also a, a one based on speed but level one for instance which is which is this insert it goes on the on the low side of the hole and immediately your eyes are drawn to to the high side which is obviously where you want to enter the ball most if I was going to give anyone a tip out there to if they're struggling with their green reading is whatever you think just give it a little bit more because once you once you hit low side the ball's gone and not only that, it actually doubles in distance in length away from the hole. So if you if you ever unsure of, I'm not, it might be right edge or just give it a little bit more because if at least if it stays high, it's always got a chance, and then you can adjust with speed. So you, so that's 33% of the size of the hole, and then we move on to level two, which is 50%. So again, as as it gets harder, it creates more intensity and more pressure, but again. Regardless of the size of the insert, the perfect putt will still go in. And that's the, the general rule that I'm trying to create, is we want to try and create as many perfect putts in practice as we can to then be able to transfer it out onto the golf course. Then level three is, a, is a, probably the most popular insert because it's 25% it's of the size of the hole. But what I've tried to do here is I've tried to, tried to take away the lip in. Yes. And again, your best scores generally you might might have lipped in three or four times. I normally have the opposite. I lip out three or four yeah. times. <laughs> but then when you have the bad days, I'll lipped out five times. Yeah. So in the practice I wanted to take that away completely. And this is probably the most popular one that tour pros use, especially when they're training just before they go what go into a last five minutes before they go into the first tee, is to really dial in that intensity and just get them ready to to knowing that they're actually getting it online at the right speed, yeah. uh, which is, yeah, it's it's one of the most, uh, I probably use that the most as well. Yeah, and, and I mean, I mean, just to give everyone an idea, if you're holding it there and you get out on the golf course, there's even more hole, you know, yeah. but your eyes are just trained into this, this smaller zone. Yeah, but not only that, people actually often tell me that they can still see this on the hole on the golf course because yeah. they've been training with it so much that they use the insert as a visualization, which also helps with your alignment and, and entry point as well. So this one can be pretty much regardless of where, how much you want to use in break, you can adjust that accordingly. And yeah. it's great for just putting it on the on the ground or at home and just putting into it. Yeah, right. So it's, yeah. This, this one's more universal. And a lot of times in Japan, there might only be four holes in the green, so I can just pull this out Put a couple of tees in the side and, and use this as my own hole yeah 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 i love that that's a great idea and then level four is is that's the ultimate there's only half a centimeter either side of the ball so this is this is when you're really really working and to be to give an example of when i designed this i actually went had a putt from a foot and i missed it right <laughs> just and catch an edge straight and it's away just sliding yep, off. missed it which gave me a great insight because as soon as I got put this insert in, I went straight into technique. Yeah. Right. And once I reset, understood, I went from one foot to twelve foot, didn't miss. So that that really gave me an insight of how much people get absorbed into technique and how trying to be perfect. But if you don't have the out skills of understanding green reading and matching that with speed, then technique doesn't matter. I think it's a great, I think it's a great product. I know you're going to do well with it. You just got to get it in front of the right people, and I, I wish you all the best with that, mate. Yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll see you again. Thank you.